in terms of adherence, adherence is a very important issue for a management of HIV. You know, why would someone not adhere to their regimen? Um, you know, one reason is that if someone's very young and they have not had experience with people who have who've died of HIV, have not experienced some of the consequences of untreated HIV, they may not be as motivated to take the medication. They may be in denial of the severity of the disease, and therefore they may not take the medication on a regular basis. Uh, sometimes people can't afford the medication for some reason. They they have high copays and they can't afford it, so they stop the medication. They become or they may become depressed, and depression itself can sometimes lead to lack of adherence because people are just don't at that moment may want to just just die for other reasons. Um, there can also be uh, lapses in insurance, so some people have if they are between insurance companies, they may not be able to get the medication. So there are multiple reasons why someone might not adhere fully to this regimen. And we're talking about something that, if, especially for the young person, is going to be 50, 60 years of their life, most likely. What, you know, what is the idea behind PrEP? Uh, PrEP means pre-exposure prophylaxis. What this means is that we're trying to prevent HIV in people who are HIV negative. This is an idea we've been pursuing for many, many years. Uh, obviously, before we had this, these medications available for this purpose, people were acquiring HIV because they were having unsafe sexual contact. Although people have been using condoms, it's been irregular. And so, you know, before PrEP was introduced, I was still seeing people who were newly infected with this disease. Um, by, uh, by great luck, one of the medications that we use to treat people with HIV has been very effective at prevention, as it turns out. It's called Truvada. It's two, it's two drugs combined into one. It's two-thirds of a treatment for HIV. So it's not sufficient to treat HIV, but it's very effective at prevention, preventing HIV in more than 90% of the people taking it. There is another medication that was just approved literally this last month called Discovi, which is an updated version of Truvada. Its safety profile is a little better, but it too is very effective at preventing uh, HIV. So, you know, what is the rationale for, how do I introduce this to patients? Well, interestingly, a lot of people just introduce it to me. I don't even have to bring it up. Um, that they know about this, and so they ask about it. But those people that I think should be on it who are not asking about it, and those people would include individuals who are getting other ST, STIs or sexually transmitted infections, those people are at great risk of getting HIV. So I very strongly urge them to go on it. And when it was first introduced in 2012, people were very reluctant to go on it. They were very they didn't want to go on medication, especially a healthy person doesn't want to be on something that could potentially cause, cause uh, adverse effects. But I think, at least in the patients that I see, many of them have really have accepted this as being um, something very valuable and something that's worth doing. They're not afraid of the side effects so much. They're obviously more afraid of getting HIV than any of the rare side effects that might come from the medication. The problem with PrEP is that it is very expensive, just as the HIV medications themselves are also very expensive. The, the idea of PrEP has been embraced by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and by the FDA. And so they, those two organizations have been pushing PrEP um, as a public health, it's for public health reasons more than anything else. Um, I, so in, in many ways we can look at it as a vaccine, although it's not really a vaccine, but as a, as a great prevention, great tool for preventing HIV. So yes, it's very expensive. Most insurance companies do cover it. It's covered by Medicaid. Um, if if a person has a high copay, the drug companies themselves, the drug company itself, will pay for some of that. So most people, at least in the state of Illinois, I can't speak in other parts of the country. Most people in Illinois will, should have access to the medication. There are also programs that can support people who don't make enough money to to pay for the drugs. So the state will pay for it, or other organizations will pay for it. Now this is not a universal thing. There are states in this country that do not have that those programs, or it's very hard for people to get access to, to PrEP. I know there's an article in, in the New York Times a few a couple months ago about people in Mississippi, for example, that um, cannot get the medication because it's, it's just not on their formularies. So and that's not only for PrEP, but it's also for HIV medications too. So access to medications, whether it's for HIV treatment or PrEP, varies, unfortunately, from state to state. And some states are much more generous than others in that regard. U equals U means undetectable equals, equals untransmittable. And what that means is that if someone is taking their HIV medication properly and the viral levels are suppressed, they are not going to transmit this virus to other, other people. Uh, now, many, a couple decades ago, the, or maybe, it was, maybe it was not that long ago, but 
the Swiss government had recommended that people were undetectable, that they didn't have to use condoms anymore with sex, and this caused a huge uproar. And statisticians calculated that there was still a risk of people transmitting, uh, of someone being on medication and still transmitting the virus to other people. But the reality is that's very rare. I think the lesson to be taken from this is that if you are having multiple sexual partners and your partner tells you, I'm on H I'm, I have HIV, I'm on medication, I'm suppressed, I'm not going to transmit it to you, I think you should take that with, not with a grain of salt, but you should be a little bit skeptical. But if you're in a monogamous relationship with what, where one person is positive and the other one's negative, the risk of transmitting that, that virus to the, un, the negative person is virtually zero. So in that setting, it's U equals U. In the reality, you just don't know what your, what your other partner's status really is, so you should still use PrEP if you're at risk. But the truth is, though, if you, tr if you really are undetectable, you're not going to transmit this virus.